Our uh, 3.7, Key Features of Quadratic Functions. This is a, kind of an introduction to graphing. Um, in 3.2, we kind of did an introduction to parabolas, and we learned a lot of these terms initially and kind of like how the different forms help us find different parts. Uh, so we're going to dive kind of more into that here today and how it relates to graphing. So some key things here. So the graph of any uh, quadratic is a parabola, like you've seen before. It's this little... I don't know, almost like a U-type shape, and it just keeps going on and on in either direction. It could be upside down. So, for example, the graph of the function f of x equals x minus 1 squared minus 4, that's vertex form. Or, if we were to put it in standard form, it'd be x squared minus 2x, and then actually it'd be minus 3. That's a typo, so that'd be minus 3. So, these two functions are the exact same function. They're just different forms of that same function. So, you could see in vertex form, quickly you could tell that the vertex, like we've talked about before, is at 1, negative 4, which there it is right there. And in standard form, you could see that it's um, the y-intercept is at negative 3, which, yeah, you could see, yep, the y-intercept is certainly at negative 3. And actually, you could also factor this. If you wanted to, you could put this in factored form like we've talked about, right? Um, and you would get, uh, you put a negative 3 up here and a negative 2 here, and you need, that'd be a negative 3 and a positive 1 be your factors. And therefore, your zeros are at negative 1 and positive 3, right? Because your zeros are the opposites of your factors. These are all things we've talked about before. Okay, so a little bit of review here. The zeros are when the function, and the function is, is the y value, basically, equals 0. That's all there is to it. So you could kind of see that here, right? The zeros are when the graph has a height of zero. See, here's the x-axis. Therefore, the y value is zero. So that's why we call it the zeros. Okay, this always happens when the graph intersects the x-axis, right? See, this is the x-axis. See how it's intersecting the x-axis? Therefore, that's the zeros. Okay. The axis of symmetry... is a line that goes right down the center of the graph. See this line right here, this blue line, that's the axis of symmetry, because it just basically, it's like a folding line. If you, were to, if you were to fold the parabola right here, it would it would match up perfectly. So it cuts it right in half. It goes right down the center, center it literally cuts the graph in half. All right, another term that you're gonna see is the vertex. We'll spend a, quite a bit on this. The vertex is in the very center of the graph. That's that guy and is always the max or min point on the graph. So we've talked about this before too, right? That See, this graph is going up, so this is the minimum point. But if you had a parabola that was going down, you'd have a maximum as your vertex. Okay, a couple things to remember, right? f of x, this is just another way of writing y. So really, anytime you see f of x, we're saying like that's kind of like your y. So f of x and y, mean they mean the same thing. It's just kind of a more uh, proper notation to call it f of x or a function um, for these types of problems. Okay, so now we know some of the basic key features. Let's talk about how to find them. And these are all things that we've done a little bit before. Zeros, x-intercepts, roots, we've talked about those. These are the solutions for x when the whole equation is set equal to zero. So that means you're going to take your function and you're going to set it equal to zero and, and solve. You could solve with, um, you could solve by factoring. You could solve, if it's in vertex form, you could solve by taking the square root. Yeah, you could solve by using the quadratic formula. That's something that we did before. Or you could solve by uh, what we called completing the square, and I'm running out of space here, right? Those are all different ways we talked about that you could solve a quadratic, and that's essentially that's how you get your zeros. Okay, the axis symmetry, this is a line. Uh, th therefore, it's always just an equation to a line, so it should be x equals a number, because vertical lines are always just x equals some number. And this is how you would do that. And this, is, this equation is only when it's in standard form. So you use this when it's in standard form because then you just plug in your a and your b into this little equation. If it's in vertex form, then it's just whatever your h is. That's all it is to it. And if it's in factored form, let's make a little note about that too. If it's in factored form, and 
we'll talk more about this, then then uh, your h just equals your two zeros. So I'll say like z1 plus z2 divided by 2. It's like the average of your two zeros. Okay, so we got lots of different ways to find that h value. And again, the axis symmetry is just x equals that h value. All right, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to find the vertex. The vertex is a point, so it's always listed as a coordinate, right? So it's some x, some y, but we usually use, but we use the letters hk, right, to represent the vertex. So if it's in vertex form, we've already talked about that, that should be really easy to find. If it's not in vertex form, then we can use this little thing. This is, again, this is, if it's in standard form, And same thing though, if it's in factored form, we could still find the h this way. And then this is still, this is true no matter what. To find the k value, you're just gonna take whatever you get for h and plug it back into the function, that'll give you the k. That doesn't matter whether it's in standard form or factored form or, or vertex form. Vertex form is just easy, you can just find the k. But uh, this is how you find the h for the different forms, and then this will work for both forms, okay? So you got some formulas there, you're gonna need to reference those, you'll be seeing those a lot. Uh, a little bit about some notation here. Um, so f of x is handy for finding specific y values of a function. For example, let's say you have a function f of x equals x squared. Well, we can denote the value of the function, the y value, when we plug in a 2, like so. So what we're saying here is that, hey, if you plug in a 2 for x, what does that equal? Well, 2 squared is 4. So we would say f of 2 equals 4. But since that's the x and now that's equal to what would be the y, you put that means that that point 2, 4 uh, is the same thing as f of 2 equals 4. It's, it's a point on the graph, okay? So that's always something we can do to kind of find some values on the graph is plug something in. So that's what that means here. It just means, hey, whatever you get for h, plug it in to the function, and you'll get that y value, or in this situation, your, your k value, because that would be h and k. Okay, let's move on. So now we got some actual problems here. Hey, look, they're in standard form. So we're going to talk about how to find all the different parts, okay? And if you remember, uh, every form has something that it can find really easily, right? And so standard form, the thing that we get really easily is the y-intercept. So since that's our superpower here, I'm going to highlight y-intercept. It's just whatever c is. So that should be one of the things we were able to find right away, right? That the y-intercept, oops. The y-intercept is simply negative 8. All right, we got one part easily. But we still need to find the roots, axis of symmetry, and the vertex. So I'll do all those parts. I guess I could, I guess maybe I should have done something like that. Because I put the blue on there twice. So let's go ahead and find the roots then, right? The roots are the zeros, right? So that's when we take this whole function f of x and we set it equal to zero. Well, this whole function is x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now remember, there's lots of different ways we could do this. We could we could factor it. We could complete the square. We could uh, use the quadratic formula, right? We could do all those different things. Uh, I look at this, and I think this is probably the easiest way to find the zeros is to factor it. So I'm just going to put a negative 8 on top, a 2 on bottom, and I need something that multiplies up to negative 8 and adds up to 2. So I know that 4 and 2 make 8, and if I make this to a negative, that should work, right? 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and 4 plus negative 2 is 2. So what that means, that means that this whole thing equals 0, and I could write this as x plus 4 times x minus 2. And this is where that zero product property comes in. You should be able to just tell what would you have to plug in here to make this whole thing equal 0. And 0 times anything would equal 0. Well, if you plug in a negative 4, how about here? What would you plug in? It would be a positive 2. So we just found our roots. It's when x is negative 4 and positive 2. All right. Now let's go ahead and find that axis of symmetry. All right. And there's a few different ways we could do this now. Remember I said in factored form. Make a little note off to the side here, right? To find the h value in factored, if it's in factored form you can just take your two zeros, whatever you got, and take the average of them. And if it's in standard form, you can just say that h equals negative b over 2a. Okay, well, we actually have it in both. 
we have standard form here and we have factored form here. So we could do either one. So I'm going to just show you that they both will work. So h equals, uh, I'm going to take my two zeros, which are negative 4 plus 2 divided by 2. And this also equals the little formula, which is uh, this one, negative b over 2a. So negative b, my b is 2, so I'm going to say negative 2 over 2 times 1. Okay, on the left here, negative 4 plus 2. Hey, look, that's negative 2. So that's a negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So my h equals negative 1. And look, negative 2 divided by 2, that's also negative 1. So either way, I get negative 1. I wanted to show you that because that's really important, that you can do it either way. I want you to understand that. It just depends on what form it is. It works. We had it in both forms, so we could use both ways. All right, so if my h is negative 1, then that means that my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 1. Remember, that's in a line. Maybe I should label these over here, too. These are your roots or your zeros. Okay, I found the y-intercept, the roots, the axis of symmetry. The only thing left is the vertex. Okay, remember the vertex is always just a point, and it's the point h comma k. Well, we already know the h because the axis of symmetry Whatever number the axis of symmetry is, that's all that comes from the h. So we already have part of this done. We know that the vertex, I'm taking up a lot of space here, but we know that the vertex is going to be negative one comma something. Well, on the last page, I said that k is equal to f of h. So I know that the function equals x squared plus 2x minus 8, and it also equals this. I could plug in negative 1 to either one of these forms and find out what it equals. Whichever one I plug it into, I'll get the same thing. So I actually like the factored form better, so I'm going to do that. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to zoom in over here. Remember that it's, a, it's x plus 4, x minus 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 into the function. Negative 1 plus 4, negative 1 minus 2. What does that equal? Negative 1 plus 4, well, that's just 3. Negative 1 and negative 2, that's a negative 3. And this will usually happen when you plug in the h values. You get kind of opposite values here. Okay, well, that's just negative 9. So that means that f of negative 1 is negative 9. And remember, that's our k value. So this is at negative 9. Okay, a lot of things we did there relatively quickly. But I'm putting all of the parts together that we've learned. And now I have a lot of information about this graph. I know it's y-intercept. I know it crosses the x-axis at negative 4 and 2. I know it has an axis of symmetry at x equals negative 1. And I know it has a vertex at negative 1, negative 9. All of these steps are going to become very important when I go to graph it. Because I want to be able to know where all these things go on the graph. Very, very important. Okay, so you're going to do all these same parts with this function over here on the right. I want you to find all of these same parts. Um, uh, this f of x equals x squared minus 14x plus 24. So give it a shot, spend some, take some time, look, look what I did to do it, and you should be able to find all these parts. Okay, pause the video when you're ready to check your work. All right, let's go over this. Let's make sure we all did this the same way. Well, first of all, the first thing you should have seen is, hey, the y-intercept is just that c-value. The c-value is 24, so the y-intercept is 24. Beautiful, that one should be easy. Next thing I went for is the root, so I went ahead and did the factoring of it. And when you factor it, 24 goes on top, negative 14 on bottom. Something, something multiplies up to 24, adds up to negative 14. I got negative 12 and negative 2 work for that. So there's my factors, but remember my zeros are the opposite of the factors because I plug in a positive 12 to make this 0. I plug in a positive 2 to make it 0. So there's my roots or my zeros. It's at 12 and 2. When you go to put this into con, they might ask it for the ascending value, which means that you'd actually have to put in the 2 first, then the 12, the lowest, then the highest. Okay, then I need my axis of symmetry. Well, this little equation, h equals negative b over 2a, that's, that's how I find the h value, and that's the same thing as the uh, axis of symmetry value. So, uh, negative b, well, b is negative 14 already, so I have a negative negative 14, which makes a positive 14, over 2 times 1, because the a value is just a 1. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, so the axis of symmetry is just simply x equals 7. All right, I got everything I need to find the vertex now. All I gotta do is plug 7, into the function. So here's the function. Remember, I like doing it in factored form. You can plug it into this. You'd get the same thing. Um, so 7 minus 12, that's that's negative 5. And 7 minus 2, that's positive 5. So negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. So the vertex must be at 7, negative 25.
boom. I got all those parts, standard form. Easy peasy, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now we're in vertex form. Well, the beautiful thing about vertex form is that we can easily find the vertex, right? So we should quickly be able to tell what the vertex is here. Let's actually do that first. The vertex, and remember, it's the opposite of the value that's in here. So this is negative five, then this is positive five. The value on the outside stays the same. So that's positive 36, so the K is 36. Easy, that should be so quick and easy to find. Boom, perfect. So we actually got the vertex done, easy. All right, let's figure out how we could find some of the other parts here relatively quickly. Well, we should be able to also find the axis of symmetry really, really easily. Because remember, the axis of symmetry is simply when um, x equals whatever the h value is. Well, we already know that h is 5, so axis of symmetry is x equals 5. Boom. Two for the price of one. That's great. So we still need to find the roots, and we still need to find the y-intercept. Neither of these are gonna be all that hard. A um, few different ways that we could find either one of these. But uh, if you remember, we did this whole thing about completing the square. And if you look, this is already written as a perfect square. So is this one. In fact, vertex form is already always written as a perfect square. So you can actually just solve this like we did um, in lesson 3.3, uh, the one where I talked about solving um, by simple quadratics by taking the square root. So we're just gonna set this thing equal to zero. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna say zero equals negative x minus five squared plus 36. Okay, I wanna get this, this number on the opposite side. So I'm just going to, actually I'm just gonna add this whole thing to both sides because it's negative, so I can add it to the other side. If this was positive, I would subtract this, but but this is, this is negative. So if I just, if you think about just adding this whole thing to both sides. Then you would get x minus five squared equals 36. Well, now we're in a situation where this is already a perfect square. So I could take the square root, take the square root. I'd get x minus five equals, remember when you take the square root of a number, you have to account for both positive and negative. So this is plus and minus six. From here, break it into two different equations. So you get x minus five equals positive six and you get x minus five equals negative six. Add five, add five, I get x equals 11. Add five, add five, I get x equals negative one. Okay, hey, there's my roots. I don't know why I'm circling, I just wanna make it very clear. All right, the last thing that I need here is the y-intercept. And remember, the y-intercept is, if it's in standard form, it's easy, but this is vertex form. But the y-intercept is always just when um, is always at x equals zero. So all I really have to do here is just take a zero and plug it in for x and figure out what I get. So let's do that. I am kind of running out of space. Do it down here. So I got f of zero then. f of zero would be negative, parentheses, instead of an x, I'm gonna put in a zero, minus five squared plus 36. Okay, just work this out. Well, negative, negative five squared plus 36. Negative five squared is positive 25, but there's a negative out front. So really what I have here is a positive 36 and a negative 25, 36 minus 25. That should be 11. So when you plug in a zero, you get 11. Therefore, the y-intercept is simply 11. Boom. Got all that information relatively quickly. Vertex form is pretty easy to graph. I mean, it took us a little bit more work to find the roots, but we were able to do it not too bad. Okay? So... Again, vertex and axis symmetry should be easy. The roots and the y-intercept might take a little bit of work, but I believe in you. You can do it. So go ahead and give uh, practice two a try. Unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. Okay, 
So the vertex should have been easy. Um, one thing that you might have messed up on is you forgot that it's always the opposite of this, right? So this h value is actually negative 1. The k value is the same. The axis symmetry is x equals negative 1 because it's just, again, same as the h. So we get those pretty easily. To find the zeros or the roots, I just set the equation equal to 0 and I solve. And I could do that relatively easily by just... Uh, adding 12.25 to the other side, then I get 12.25 equals x plus one squared, then I could take the square root. The square root of 12.25 is plus or minus 3.5. Remember the plus or minus equals x plus one. All right, 3.5 equals x plus one. I separated it, so I have positive 3.5 and negative 3.5, then I just solve, so I get x equals 2.5 and x equals 4.5. All right, that's the roots, right? So I got the roots, I got when this thing equals zero, it's at these two points. Now, the last thing I need to do is the y-intercept plug in a zero, uh, that's pretty easy. I get one squared, that's just one. So one minus 12.25 is negative 11.25. So I got all these parts. Now, if I was to graph this, I could use all these to uh, figure out where it goes on the graph. All right, let's go to the next page. Okay, all right, we're in factored form, all right? And we're gonna find all the same features again. But now, remember in factored form, the kind of the superpower of factored form is it's really easy to find the roots. They're just the opposites of these values here. Hence the minus sign in there. So we should be able to find the roots of this guy like really quickly. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that first. The roots are the opposites of these values. And these ones happen to be opposites of each other's as well. So the roots are simply x equals, we got positive five and negative five. That was easy. Okay. Um, all right, what else is gonna be easy to find? Well, actually factored form is pretty easy to get to everything else. Because if you remember, I told you that the h value, which you need for the axis symmetry and the vertex, you just take your two zeros. I was doing z1 and z2 before, but we could do p and q just as well. You add them together and you divide by two. That's how you find your h. So if I was trying to find, let's say, the axis symmetry, oops, then all I got to do find the h value, and the h value is 5 plus negative 5 divided by 2. Well, 5 plus negative 5 is 0, so 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So that means the axis of symmetry is x equals 0. That also means we have the first part of the vertex, so if I was trying to find the vertex, remember, that's going to be my h, which we already know is 0, comma some k value. That's what I get when I plug in a 0. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say f of 0. And this is going to be interesting because this also, remember, we also plug in a 0 when we want to find the y-intercept. So, so what I'm going to do right here will also give me the y-intercept. It's kind of a nice little function. This one's getting two for ones here. So f of 0, well, that's 1 fifth of 0 minus 5 times 0 plus 5. Okay. And that's 1 fifth of negative 5 times 5. Okay, I'm looking at this right here and I'm seeing, well, I'm going to be multiplying these things together. I'm, I have a 1 fifth and a 5. This is kind of like saying 5 divided by 5. So those things just kind of cancel each other out. And I get that f of 0 is negative 5. Okay, so there's my vertex. Boom. Remember, when plug, to find the y-intercept, you plug in a 0 for x as well. So I already know that the y-intercept is also at negative 5. So that means it just so happens that in this situation, the y-intercept and the vertex are actually the same spot. And that'll happen whenever you have roots that are exact opposite each other's. Because if you kind of think about this thing graphically really quick, you got zeros here at negative 5 and at 5. Well, if this thing was to open up like this, well, what would be in the exact middle? Well, it would be the vertex and the y-intercept, right? Because here's the y-axis. Here's, here's the y-axis, right? And there's the vertex and the y-intercept in the same spot because this thing is like perfectly symmetrical along the y-axis because its roots are at exact opposite sides of the y-axis. Okay, I want you to try practice number three on your own and then unpause the video when you're ready to check your work.
that. So we should have seen right away that the roots are the opposites of 4 and 6. That's negative 4 and negative 6. Um, the axis symmetry, we could just take the average of our zeros, right? The average of our roots, negative 4, negative 6 is negative 10. Divide that by 2 is negative 5. So the axis symmetry is x equals negative 5. That's also your h value of your vertex. So I took that, I plugged it into the original function, simplified it, and I got negative 2. Therefore, your vertex is at negative 5, negative 2. And if I the y-intercept, I just plug in a 0. And that's, um, I get 0 plus 4, 0 plus 6. That's 2 times 4 times 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. So boom, I got 48. Okay, lots of fun work there. Here's a summary. It says, you have now learned how to find all the key features of a quadra quadratic regardless of what form it is in. I want to know which form do you think is the easiest to use and why, right? So you got standard, you got vertex, and you got factored. Which form would you uh, prefer to use each time? Which one do you think is the easiest? All right, see you guys on the next video.